I'm Aaron Martin Colby, the Watery Gourmet, and today I will be reviewing the Ranchilio Rocky, one of the most popular espresso grinders on the market. And here it is, as promised, the Rocky. Ranchilio makes two products that are legendary in the world of home espresso, the Rocky, as seen here, and the Silvia Espresso Machine. They go so well together, in fact, you can buy a chrome stand that holds both of them along with a couple of small drawers down below for whatever you would ever put into some very small chrome drawers. And as I mentioned, the Rocky is the most popular espresso grinder on the market, and as far as I know, that's true, and with very good reason. It's the cheapest good grinder that you can buy. For those uninitiated in the freakish ways of espresso, describing nearly 400 bucks as cheap might seem a little off, but trust me, that's pretty cheap. Unfortunately, though, you do make some concessions, well, which I'll address later. It's equally unfortunate that other major espresso companies haven't yet responded to the call to lower their prices. The Rocky is basically still the only grinder for a major company that's below 500 bucks. We've got the doser on front, the hopper up top, and everything else you would expect of an espresso grinder. You can see a knock box and espresso machine sitting on either side of the grinder, required espresso gear. I've also ditched the included grind tray and replaced with a paper plate from which I've cut a grinder size segment. It works like a charm and does a much better job of preventing my counter from turning into a dirt pile than the original tray. You'll also notice that I have removed the portafilter holder. It's terrible. Since the doser chute isn't very long, the grinds will just get pushed to the left as you thwack them out, and the only way to compensate for this is to move the portafilter around, which you can't do when the holder is in place. Two screws and it's gone, baby, gone. And good riddance. The grinder is easier to use and more enjoyable without it. The hopper doubles as a grind adjuster, and you can see the numbered marks. The plastic is tinted, supposedly preventing UV and light damage to the unground beans, which is, of course, a total lie. The hopper doesn't do jack squat to prevent degradation of the beans. They'll go stale just the same. I recommend that you add them as you use them. Adjusting the grind is easy. You press down the little locking button and rotate the entire hopper. It goes from 0 to 50 with a screw preventing you from grounding out the burrs. While it goes all the way up to 50, you'll rarely, if ever, use that. For espresso, you essentially have 10 steps, 1 through 10. Any higher is useless. I generally keep mine in the 5 to 9 range, with really dark or stale beans as low as 3, and super fresh beans as high as 10, but those are basically the extremes. When you open up the grinder to clean it, you'll find that the stopper guard, as I mentioned, preventing you from going past zero is nothing more than a bent wood screw. I mentioned concessions for the price, but this was just unbelievably ghetto. Ranchilio should frankly be ashamed. Moreover, I wish that the grinder was either stepless or had finer steps. While you can compensate during drink preparation by tapping the portafilter more or less and futzing with your tamp pressure, essentially having only five settings is quite a limitation for fresh beans. It might be the cheapest, but it's far from the fastest grinder on the market. Grinding 19 grams of beans, enough for a double, takes over 20 seconds. In a fast-paced environment, that's essentially an eternity. To be fair, if you're running a very light-duty shop where espresso is only a secondary element to your business, this is more than fast enough. But even then, if you can afford it, I'd recommend getting something better. There are also problems with this grinder in a home environment. The chute from which the espresso falls is not angled downward. It relies on momentum from the grinder to fling grinds out of the doser. This inevitably clogs up the chute, and a shocking amount of grinds are left behind. And where a commercial environment would move beans through quickly enough, where the leftovers would never get stale, at-home users might make as few as one drink per day. That means cleaning it out after every use. Thus, I have my handy-dandy little metal skewer here, which I use to fish around in there. Really annoying, certainly, but not a deal-breaker. And while we're in here, I'd also like to point out an issue with the design. The doser blades don't come anywhere near the edges of the doser wall, resulting in a persistent wall of grinds. In general, this has no effect on the quality of your coffee, since the wall of grinds forms and keeps all future grinds within reach of the blades, but it's lazy design. It's also functionally problematic if you lived in a human climate, human, what am I saying, humid climate, since the grinds will start to form mold after a few days of inactivity. 
Unfortunately, the doser on the Rocky, no matter how pesky, is all but necessary for espresso. If you are not making espresso, the doserless is fine, but as you'll see, it's not a good option for espresso, especially freshly roasted or dark espresso. The hopper presents more design problems. The screws that hold the hopper in place are open air, meaning that beans will inevitably get inside, preventing you from easily getting to the screws, which you need to remove to clean the grinder, which you should be doing regularly. A simple set of plastic caps would have done the job, but no, you have to either force your way in with a screwdriver, blow them out with compressed air, making one hell of a mess, or try to pick them out with a skewer. Also of issue with the hopper is the guard. It's too big, too low down, and too just generally crappy. Dark roasted, oily beans will get perpetually stuck under the guard, necessitating a good wonk on the side of the espresso machine, or your actively pushing of the beans down into the burrs. Neither option is very elegant, both are annoying when you have a portafilter in your hand, and you would be well served to simply bust out your Dremel and cut that bastard out entirely. We finally come to the point of the grinder, the grind. It's not a quiet grinder, but it's not horrifically loud either. I'll give you a quick listen. See, not too bad. This gives me a chance to discuss the only functional issue with the grinder. Static. Look at that pile of grinds. It looks like cat food. This is the reason why the doser is necessary. With it, you can rapid fire thwack away, thus going much of the way toward breaking up all of these clumps. You can also do what I did. I took one of those fake credit cards that everyone gets in the mail and cut one side with the edge of a large bowl, creating a curve, and kept one side flat. This lets me chop up the coffee grounds, level, and also flip the card around to adjust the dose with the curved side if I feel the need. Again, with drip coffee, this isn't much of an issue, nor is it for AeroPress, pour over, or siphon, or any other prep method you can imagine. But for the high pressure, super fast production of espresso, clumps like this can kill a shot. You need absolutely need evenly distributed coffee particles. Basically, if you're in the market for the Rocky for espresso making, get the model with the doser. You can also see the amount of grounds that get stuck in the chute after you stop grinding. Again, with my trusty skewer, I venture in. Even doing a half-assed job generated enough grinds to half-fill a single. That's significant, and fixing that in the design would not have had a negative effect on cost. This is annoying, especially if you weigh out espresso beans before putting them into the grinder like I do. The grinder forces you to go spelunking inside to retrieve all of the beans that you had carefully measured, and thus achieve an accurate weight in your dose. But, at least it's ground the espresso, which is certainly a plus. And, about that, voila! Ground espresso. Much of what I've been saying is cast the Rocky in a very negative light, but I see that as part of what makes a critic a critic. A critic should be picky. It's their job. But I don't mean to indicate that the Rocky is crap. I opened this review saying that it was the cheapest good grinder that you can find, and that's true. It has commercial grade guts for under 400 bucks, and aside from the static issue, it does everything that it's meant to do well. The number of fines, very small particles that can clog up the portafilter, is a non-issue, and that's certainly an issue with a lot of other cheaper grinders. The grind, once static is eliminated, is very even. The internals are built like a tank, and it's decently attractive. Truly, it's a good grinder. But while $400 in the world of espresso is low, in the world of non-insane people, it's pretty friggin' high, which makes many of the design issues stand out like a sore thumb. Worse still, these are problems that have persisted for years. The Rocky has been on the market since the early 2000s, indicating that Ranchilio simply has no desire to fix them. If you're a home user and you're on a budget, this grinder should be at the top of your list. But 
if you can afford to bump a price category, say two, uh, around two hundred more dollars, say like a Maycap M4 or a Mazer Mini, I would recommend it. That eliminates absolutely every criticism I have of this machine. They're better designed, more attractive, quieter, basically better in every conceivable way. And the same goes for a commercial environment. Even if you produce only a few espressos per day, the easier operation, cleaning, and maintenance of those more expensive models will pay dividends in the end. But, as I said, the grinder does what it's supposed to. It produces espresso ready grounds consistently, it looks good on the counter, and will last for years of household level usage before needing maintenance. The issues of poor design choices and static, really the only two major issues of this grinder, are in the end, at least to me, a reasonable trade off for the low price. I still recommend that if you can afford it or if you think that you can wait and save up, go for a better grinder. But if you decide on the Rocky, your coffee will get ground. And I guess, what more can you ask for? I hope this helped. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Martin Colby, the Watery Gourmet.